Hey, what's going on, everyone? Just got out of work. My hands are all messy. Should have washed them before I got up, but oh well. You know, commit the works of your hands unto the Lord, and you'll establish your thoughts. It's true. Do everything as if you're doing it for God. You know, I, I put up a video recently. I didn't really know what to say about it, but, you know, God told me to share it. And it's, it's... You know, I started thinking today about, you know, the sufferings, sharing in the sufferings of Christ. And, you know, God gave me a revelation on it. And I want to share that with you guys now. That I'm out of work and I have more time to talk than just, you know, being on break and trying to do it real quick. But, uh, you know, I, I used to think that the sufferings of Christ was people condemning you and persecuting you for speaking truth and people, like, hating on you for your faith and all that but it's it's so much deeper you know I've, I've been walking with God for a while and you know I've, I've seen people raise up and start following Christ and you know I was, I was able to walk with them and pray with them and guide them and lead them and then and then you see them the devil comes and just tempts them and pulls them away and you see these people just just fall away and then another another thing is like when people come up to you, like if you go to a church and you're asked to be one of the prayer leaders, you go up front and you're sitting there and people are coming up to you and asking for prayer. Man, you go to church and your life could be fine. You could be happy. You know, I'm coming here. I'm going to praise the Lord. And, you know, you're in a good mood. But the people around you. Man, someone could be coming there and, and their, their child could have just been diagnosed with some you know, deadly, deadly virus that's going to kill them. Someone's mom could could have been told that they have three weeks left to live. You know, it's it's like those things, they hurt. When you see people fall away, when you know people that have, that need prayer, and you see all the hurt and all the pain in people, and it, it hurts. It does. You know, Solomon said that those who increase in wisdom increase in sorrow. That's true. And that's that's part of the sufferings of Christ. You know, it's 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 interesting because, you know, I see a lot of these evangelists and you know, they'll have a huge rally. And at their next rally, they'd be like, oh, well, 300 people came to Christ at my last rally. And, you know, I, I remember taking one of those evangelists aside after his huge rally. And I was like, hey, you said that, you know, 280 some people came to Christ at your last rally. And he said, yeah. And I asked him, I said, how many of them are still in the faith? And he stopped and he said, I don't know. And I asked him, I said, okay, what, what church did you send them to? He said, I didn't. So what is it to you? Is it just a number? You know, oh, well, how many demons have you casted out? How many people have you brought to Christ? How many wonderful works have you done? You know, are, you, are you willing to walk alongside these people and suffer with them and carry their burdens instead of just, oh, well, I'm this great, powerful minister, and I'm just going to go here and do this and go here and do that, and then you don't, you don't care about the people. You know, Jesus said that what you do to the least of these, you do to me. You know, if, if we're supposed to have a relationship with Christ, we're supposed to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our strength. And we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters as ourselves. You know, I can, I can honestly say that every single person that the Lord has used me to bring into his kingdom from when I started my walk, I still talk to every single one of them. Everyone. Some of them have fallen away, but most of them have stayed, stayed firm. You know, there was even a, a brother of mine who came to Christ, and, you know, when he was, uh, when I first met him, he was a recluse. He locked himself in his room. He was afraid to go outside. He was afraid of people. He was afraid of talking to people. He was depressed. He would see you know, shadows in his room, he get demonically tormented all the time. And 
he was he was in a Christian chat online, and you know people were making fun of him because he was struggling with homosexuality. You know, people were just condemning him and throwing him away. And I, I just became a Christian at that time. It's like, this is the very first guy I led to Christ. And I just remember thinking, like, you know, when I wasn't a believer and I was around these Christians and all they did was beat me up and condemn me, it just made me hate Christians and made me hate God. But then when God showed me who he is, I absolutely fell in love with him. So I put myself in his shoes. And I knew that he was suffering. I knew that he was hurting. So I went to him in private. And I started talking to him and telling him, you know, my testimony, how I was, I experienced demonic torment and I used to hate people. I used to hate talking to people. I liked being alone. You know, I was at a point when I was younger where I'd take a sleeping pill, go to bed, wake up, take a sleeping pill again, go back to sleep because I hated reality. I just wanted to escape it. I hated everything about my life. And he he found Christ, and he had a, he had a brain tumor in his head, and you know he had to go to the doctors and everything all the time, and, and all this stuff. And I told him, you know, God's gonna heal you. And he said, Well, I hope so, man. You know, after he came into the faith, you know, he started, he started sharing all these awesome testimonies with me, and he's getting involved in his in his church. And he was telling me how his family was poor, and he was watching something, and they had a prayer rug, and he's like, oh, I really want that. I want a place to call my own where I can get down and just seek the Lord. And he wanted that prayer rug, but his family didn't have the money for it. So he gave his email to the ministry because he, he signed up for the, the newsletter or whatever, and then someone from the ministry emailed him and said that the Lord put it on their heart to send him a free rug. So... You know, th I seen this guy. This is the first guy that I was I was able to lead to Christ, and I seen him just grow in faith so much. And he was healed of that brain tumor. That brain tumor completely went away, but it came back. You know, and when it came back, it was three times as large. And right now, he's losing his sight, but he hasn't left the faith. He stayed steadfast in his faith, and do you know what he's doing? He's inspiring everyone around him. Like before he said he was afraid to talk to people, but now, you know, I have him on Facebook. I go to his Facebook and he posts something like, yes, I'm suffering, but I'm going to stay strong and I'm going to get through this. And he's inspiring people. He's inspiring people like crazy. And God's using them in that. And it's beautiful. You know, I've, I've, I've been hurting a lot lately. I've been hurting a lot. And the reason I've been hurting a lot is because of other churches, other Christians. You know, they, they, they put out this example, and then you follow that example, and then they get mad at you. Like I, was, I was dealing with a church that was uh, preaching that uh, they need real Christians to rise up and uh, correct these churches that are doing things that are false, and they need them to stand up and... I did it. I did exactly what they said, but I corrected them. And all of a sudden, oh, only Jesus can do that. You're in the wrong, bro. It confused me and it hurt me. So basically everyone in that ministry wants nothing to do with me anymore. No one talks to me. Everyone's basically like, you're out of your mind. And here I am, alone, again, with nobody. You know, all I have is Jesus, and it's it's hard sometimes because sometimes I just wish I had a friend. Someone that would keep in contact with me, stay in touch. And it's interesting because I even put it to a test. Yeah, I got, you know, that, that group and everything. But it's like if, if I don't make an effort and reach out to people, they're not going to reach out to me. At least not people in my immediate immediate area, like people close to me, people I went to church with, people I walked with. You know, there's people on that online group that, you know, they love me and they show that love. But, I mean, it's, it's different when you have a friend that's nearby. And it seems like I can't get friends in my hometown. That just 
It's impossible. I don't know why, but I can't find any friends around here. I need to move, start over. You know, I don't want to be one of these YouTube people who do things just to get likes. I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't, I don't want to be here counting numbers and make it like if, if I don't want to say anything because I don't, I don't want to put anyone, put anyone down for what they're doing. But it's at the same time, it's like, man, what are you doing? I want to see God glorified. I don't want to see man glorified. You know, I ask you guys, if you ever see me doing things on my channel and it feels like I'm doing it just to get likes, rebuke me, please. Correct me. Take me aside and tell me that you feel that I'm doing something that's not honoring God, it's honoring myself. I don't want to live a life to honor myself. I want to be able to honor God. You now I'm just making this video because I want to just share what's on my heart because it's been a while since I've been able to actually do that. I haven't actually sat down and poured myself out. I've been spending a lot of time alone seeking God. It's, it's, I don't know, seasons of singleness, like Danielle says. You know, Danielle's got a YouTube channel. It's pretty awesome. I'll, I'll put it in the description. You guys can check her out. She's she's great. She's got so much wisdom. And it's, you know, you, it's the Holy Spirit coming through her when she teaches. I like listening to her videos. She's awesome. <laughs> I don't really know her, though. I think I talked to her maybe twice, but her videos are pretty cool. She's, she seems like a cool person. And she was telling me that uh, <clears throat> she got attacked because uh, she was told that uh, girls aren't supposed to preach. But it says they're not supposed to teach. Preaching and teaching are two completely different things. And when it comes to preaching, you know, she's great. But if you look in the Bible as an example of women, you know, there, there was a woman in the Bible who was able to explain the mysteries of God better than a man can. But the thing is, is that a woman shouldn't have authority over a man or be a teaching in a church. You know, God has a certain specific plan for them. But that, that's, that's different. I don't want to get into that right now. You know, what do you, comment below. Tell me what you guys think the sufferings of Christ are. You know, persecution, seeing people fall away, suffering in prayer. And another thing that I've, I've really started to realize is that when, you, when you're praying for a lot of people and you're really flowing in the Spirit and the power of God is coming through you, your body shuts down. Your body can't handle that. It's weird because it's like all this supernatural stuff just flowing through you and your body can't handle it. And you feel so taxed in your flesh after that, but in your spirit you feel incredible. But the flesh begins to fail. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. You know, I'm just I'm just trying to grow more in Christ. I'm just trying to just figure things out. You know, I, I keep getting a word from all these prophetic pastors. I go to different churches. They all give me the same word that I need to give birth to what God put in me. I've been thinking, what is it? I don't even know. God put it in me. and I got a word three times that it, he put it in me nine months ago. And he's been waiting for me to birth it. And I've been praying. I don't know what it is. You know, the only thing I can really think of is making a five-fold ministry. You know, I, I want to find someone basically be able to put a ministry together that is all parts of the DNA of Christ, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, and just bring them all together as one. And then you get, you know, I don't want to really get into that because that's, that's, that's a lot to explain because you got the fivefold ministry and then you got the seven spirits of the Lord and, you know, you need all these things to really get a ministry that's going to manifest Christ 
and you know be one so the world will know that Christ sent them and that's that's something that I want to do something that I'm striving for but it's going to be in God's timing but he keeps telling me to give birth to it now but I don't know how maybe I do know how but No, I don't want to be exciting. I don't want to put on a show. I'm just here to speak my heart. You know, I'm here for you guys if you guys want to talk. You know, something I will say about something I've seen on YouTube, you know, because it bugs me, and it's still bugging me. It, it was uh, on Tuesday, and it's Thursday. No, yeah, it's Thursday now. So it's it's three days, and it's been bugging me. You know, there's there's someone who's got a lot of followers, and they were... They were on a live stream and they were talking to someone about fleeing from uh, temptation of masturbation. And he told them, you know, when you get that temptation, go take a cold shower. And show me that in the Bible. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that's a bad idea. It's it's a good idea to calm the flesh down, definitely. But it's, it's not going to cure it. it it's kind of like putting a Band-Aid over a broken arm. So, you know, how do we overcome temptation when something like that happens? Well, the Bible says that faith comes from hearing and that faith produces grace. So if we want the grace to overcome a sin, when we get that temptation, when we get that desire to sin, speak a truth that's from the Word of God about that situation. Like maybe, you know, if you're... Uh, struggling with pornography or masturbation, read the verse in the Bible that simply says that, you know, the sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, it, it seems simple, but it's, it's the word of God. If it's going to come in to your ears, out of your mouth gate, into your ear gate, and it's also going to your eye gate because you're reading it out of the Bible, and it goes out of you and then back into you, and then it saturates your spirit. And when you speak the word of God over yourself and saturate your spirit in the word of God, something happens to be able to overcome. Oh yeah, because you hear it, you produce faith, and then faith produces grace, and then grace allows you to overcome the world. Not cold showers. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not putting you on blast for that, man. It's just that was just a little weird to me, and it's been bugging me. God keeps telling me not to allow the mouth of man to condemn me. I see why he keeps telling me that, because people are coming after me. But I don't, again, that's not the sufferings of Christ. Not in full. So, yeah, I'm just here to bore you guys and ramble and rant you know that this is not really an educational youtube it's not a nothing like that it's just meant to be like a blog you know i share testimonies things that you know god does in my life and does through me and things i see that god does that's what i want to share with you guys and i'm also going to share my heart when i can you know i'm not going to sit here and pretend that i'm this awesome preacher and pastor and whatever and act like I got everything all figured out. Because truth is, no one does. No one's got it all figured out. And we all need each other. We're all part of the body. If one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. So, you know, I just want to let you guys know that I'm here for you. Anyone who finds my channel, anyone who watches this video, you can feel free. You know, just comment on my, comment on my stuff and let me know that you want to talk. There's nothing you can say to me that would be wrong. You no. Know, I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm here to put an arm around you and walk with you and show you what's right, what's the truth. 
you know, the best way to do that is through relationships.